Hello all my friends, this is Juliana. I'm a registered nurse, but I love traveling and learning about history. Right now I'm traveling with my brother Richard and his friend Enoch. Today we went to the Walijka salt mine in the town of Walijka, southern Poland. The Walijka salt mine started recorded excavation in the 13th century. Commercial salt mining was discontinued in 1996, but the mine produced table salt until 2007 and is one of the world's oldest operating salt mines. The mine shut down due to falling salt prices and mine flooding. People have been mining the Walijka salt mine since prehistory. They started out extracting salt from salty springs by boiling the water in clay pots. When the water started to lose their salt, the locals started digging wells. Eventually the wells became mines and rock salt was being extracted directly. For millennia this was done by hand. An interesting fact was that the salt was mined into rounded columns rather than cubes. The columns were about a meter long and the salt was carried closer to the surface by being rolled over the mine pathways up to the lifting device. The chips were collected into 30 kilogram sacks and carried by workers up steps, up and down the steps, lugging a sack and back down the path to get another one again and again. The 800 year old salt mine is one of the oldest operating mines in the world. Commercial salt mining stopped in 1996, but the caverns left from the excavation have changed over the years and developed into a tourist attraction that is a must see on your trip to Krakow, Poland. The mine reaches a depth of 1,073 feet or 327 meters and extends via horizontal passages and chambers for over 178 miles or 287 kilometers. The rock salt is natural varying shades of gray resembling unpolished granite rather than the white crystalline substance that might be expected. Although in some areas you can see white salt. Since the 13th century, brine welling up to the surface had been collected and processed for, for its sodium chloride. In this period, wells began to be dug and the first shafts were dug to extract the rock salt. In the late 13th to 14th century, the Saltworks Castle was built. Valichka is now home to the Krakow Salt Works Museum. In one of the displays made of salt, it talks about a legend, and this legend is as old as the mine itself. A long time ago, the Polish Prince Bolesław the Chaste asked his chosen one, the Hungarian Princess Kinga, to marry him. As an engagement gift, he gave Kinga a beautiful ring. When the princess left her hometown for Poland, her father, King Bela IV, wanted to offer his daughter an appropriate dowry. He gave her a salt mine in Hungary. But this gift did not satisfy Kinga as the mine was too far from her new kingdom. Before leaving for Poland, she visited the tabernacle she had been given and contemplated how to transport the salt to Poland. During this visit, she tossed her engagement ring into one of the shafts while praying. When Kinga arrived in Bolesław's country, she set off on a tour of the kingdom. While visiting a small village near Krakow, a lump of salt was found in the field. Inside the lump was a ring, the same one that the princess had thrown into the shaft. That's the same place she commanded the miners to start digging. In this display, it showed how the miners would risk their lives by lighting off methane gas with their torches. It was a very dangerous job. King Kashmir III the Great, who reigned from 1333 to 1370, contributed greatly to the development of the Vlachka salt mine, granting it many privileges and taking the miners under his care. Although, as you will see, this was a still a very difficult job. 
1363, he founded a hospital near the salt mine. It is said that the salty air was good for patients with lung problems. Over the period of the mine's operation, many chambers were dug and various technologies were added such as the Hungarian horse treadmill and the Saxon treadmill for hauling salt to the surface. During World War II, the mine was used by the occupying Germans as an underground facility for war-related manufacturing, although not much was done because the Soviets were advancing. There's a very big hall here with salt chandeliers and sculptures. Weddings are held here. Orchestras have played here. It's very beautiful and it was much bigger than I thought it would be. Most of these sculptures have only been done since the 1960s. For more information, check their website, but you can buy a ticket online or in person. Plan for about half a day. The whole tour was about two hours, but that doesn't include standing in line, waiting to buy a ticket, and then waiting for the tour. There are shops and places to eat, so plan for a longer time. Wear a light jacket or sweater. It's a little cooler than ambient temperature. We took the English tour. Tours are conducted in English, Spanish, Italian, French, or German. You can get there by train, bus, or car. The Velichka Salt Mine has a few different entrances at the facility. Make sure you locate the entrance for tourists via the Pedervisky shaft. For all types of ticket holders, this is the main way to enter the salt mine, and you also have to pay for parking. A large part of the Velichka salt mine is accessible to people with reduced mobility. However, not all areas of the mine are suitable for disabled persons. Due to the age and natural structure of the area, some parts are uneven and difficult to access. We went down about 530 steps right at the beginning. Toilets are present at various points and are marked clearly. Guests who are visibly impaired can touch the exhibits and be accompanied by a guide dog or assistant. In the underground area, some help will be provided to guests with special needs.
The salt mine has a very large lake and two smaller lakes. It was very fascinating to see them. Horses appeared in the village mine only at the beginning of the 16th century. They worked both in horizontal transport, pulling trolleys with salt, and in vertical transport by powering treadmills. Over time, there were over a hundred horses in the Velichka mine. The animals, once lowered to the mine, spent almost all their lives there. Very rarely and only in exceptional cases were they brought to the surface during their lifetime. Some horses were not adapt to the mine and went crazy or simply died. On average, these animals worked for about 10 years, but some worked in the mine for up to 24 years. Their work was hard but very helpful, so they were greatly valued. As early as in the 16th century, the mining authorities included the mining instructions requiring standards for food working and working conditions and rest for the horses. The salt mine has been a destination for a long time. Copernicus even visited back in the early 1500s. Pope John Paul the second was a visitor and also Bill Clinton. We really enjoyed visiting the Velichka salt mine. The salt mine was definitely worth seeing.